Sometimes in Power Query, you want to be able to filter or do other actions, but you want this to be changeable by something who doesn't know how to use Power Query. So here it is hard coded, which is no good because we want them to be able to change it from a cell value or from a parameter. Power Query does have these things called managed parameters and they work well in Power BI and I'll show you that. They don't work too well in Excel, so we're gonna do a workaround for that. My name is David and I'm gonna have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tickle the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So let's get started. So in Excel, I'm going to close and load. As we know from the regular Power Query, it's going to load it to a new worksheet, but I'm going to actually cut and paste it to the rest of our sheets. So we have it next to it. Now let's say that this is something that I want to filter it by. So I can grab this and I can go to the data tab and choose from table or range. It'll ask me to make a table, I'll press okay. So here it is, is table three. You might wanna rename your table first, but I can rename it here if I want to. Although it's probably better to do the other way around. Um, here we go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose drill down. And now it's just this value. So now this is called reference and in source data, if I look at the formula bar, I'm going to change that to reference. Now, if you don't see a formula bar, go to the view tab and make sure you tick this and then you'll see it. And then here I'm going to type in reference, press tab like that, press enter. And then it is going to filter it by that amount and it is going to be customizable. So if I go to close and load, it's now going to load reference. I probably don't want that. So I'll show you how to Remove that in one of the settings. You don't want to load your parameters like this. You want them to be connection only. So if I was to change this to, for example, 100826, then if I right click on here and I refresh, now it is editable by that. There is just one, but let's say for argument's sake that I'm going to change this one to this one. Then if I refresh, now there are two, as we might expect. Now you might want this to be a drop down list. What you can do in Excel is you can select this value, go to data and choose a data validation over here. And you can choose a list to be all of this. Press okay. And then you get it to have a drop down there. The new way the data validation works is that it ignores duplicates in your list. So that's really convenient for this kind of thing. Otherwise you'd see loads of duplicates according to that. However, you could have a source list as well if you want to, however you want to play it. Now you could even do this without having a table by clicking on the cell and typing in your name box and say this is going to be cost selection. And then just like before, you're gonna click on that and click from table arrange. It's called slash range because it can be a named range as well. But you'll notice here on the right, you have this that promotes the headers. So we actually want to dismiss these two steps. We just want the source. And like before, I want to add as new query or drill down. Probably drill down is fine here as new query will duplicate it. There we go. And you'll notice that this one is text, this one is a number. So it's formatted my numbers as need be. Now, if I want to use that inside another thing, I'm going to just duplicate this query. And in this one, I'm not going to filter. I'm actually going to say a conditional column. I'm going to say if cost equals and note that you have parameter here, so it would be nice that you could do it without the custom code. But unfortunately, if you do it from a cell value in Excel, you do need the custom code. So here I'm going to say, first give an example. So rent needs to be uppercase if it's uppercase there, mind you. Then say check, otherwise say okay. And here I'm going to say action. There we go. And now it's saying check for the two rent ones. This is what I wanted. Cost selection is wages though. So how do I change this to wages? So what I need to do is go to this step and then I need to overwrite it where it says rent, I need to write cost selection. And that needs to be without speech marks because it is referring to the name of a query. So I can click on that, double click, and now click outside and it locks it in. And there you go. Now we have the checks in the different symbols. And if I was to change it here, it would change as well. So that is how you can do it. And you can use parameters essentially in pretty much any one of these steps. The places where I use it the most are probably those two, the conditional column and the filters. Uh, and then also get data from a file as well. And I'll show you that in a second as well. So close and load. So here we have a folder path. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select it, give it a name, call it folder path, same as before. And can't have spaces in this. I'll show you what to do if you do have spaces in the queries from table arrange. So we want to get rid of these. So we have a couple of undesirable things that are happening by default. So let's show you how to get rid of them. So in file and then options and settings and query options. You're going to be doing a lot of this. You probably want to do these steps. So click on data load and choose never detect column types and headers. Then you won't get these automatic steps. I'll show you what that looks like. And I usually do this. Specify custom default load settings and undo these two. Press OK. And then let me press close and load. And you'll see that it won't create a new worksheet associated with it. This is connection only. I want to load it. I can right click there and load too. But if it's parameters, I don't need to. Uh, next up, I'm going to do another query from this. It's going to be duplicate, but just to show you the example, this one is not going to promote the headers. So from table arrange, it's going to do folder path two, and this one I can delete it. So this one is folder path two. It hasn't got the promoted headers. I still do need to right click and drill down. But one thing that's happened is you'll notice that Power Query put in a space and then number two because it was duplicates. Now there is something special you need to do when you are referring to queries that have that. But first, let's show you how to get data from a folder. I'm going to choose new source file and then folder. And then I'm going to just choose something generic like this. And then I'm going to say transform data. So just get the file names, not do any transforming yet. I can do certain things like I can filter this for Excel files. That's often what I would do here. Note that you might want to lowercase them first, otherwise you'll get this and it won't get all the ones that you want. Uh, so that's all well and good, but what about if I want to make this more dynamic? So here it folded all files and it's got this, which is hard-coded. What if I want to make that generic? So what I can do is instead of that, I can just put in the query name, which is the parameter. So folder path, and then if I double-click this, note that it is now going to a different folder path, which is why I want to, but it is starting with the speech marks and ending with the speech box. And before the speech box, it has this hash symbol. That is because whenever you're referring to something with a space in Power Query, you need to have that. Now, if I just had folder path like that and go back here, it's actually going to update it and remove that cluster around it. So it is better to have stuff without spaces in your Power Query steps and in your parameters as well. So yeah, so these are my parameters. You probably do want to organize them. So control click them and move to group, new group. And I'm going to say this is parameters from cell values. Great. And then here are our queries. So how does this differ if you are going to use the manage parameters thing? Well, this works a lot better in Power BI. So let me switch over to the Power Query mode in Power BI. So here I am in Power BI, essentially the same table. And here I have a parameter in transform data dropdown. You have edit parameters. So this is kind of nice because a user is able to select one of these if they want to, like that. And then apply changes, and then it will update here. So how do we kind of do that? If I go to transform data, what I have is this symbol means it's a parameter and I can manage the parameter like that, or I can click on here and I can choose to create a new parameter. And let's say this is cost selection. And then I'm going to choose a current value to be rent. Press OK. I'll explain the other things in a little bit. So there you go. That's another one now. And what I can do is right click and duplicate this query. Let's not filter it. Similar to before, let's add a additional column. And now I can say if cost equals, now I can choose a parameter, which is cool, cost selection. Then output check, otherwise OK again. There we go. And now I can change this one. and. There's no drop down in here because I didn't say there should be. But if I would say wages like that, and here it updates for wages now like that as well. Note that if I go back to my Power BI mode, 
the user is able to edit the parameters and they now see both of them, but this one has a drop down and the other one doesn't. So back in here, what do I do if I do want to drop down? Well, I can go back to this one and manage parameters. And then here I can say type. I can also say the type specify if I want to, uh, whether or not it's required and a description if I want to. So I can choose between any value, a list of values and query. So list of values means I can type them in here. So wages, rent, and then I can have my default value, which is one of these. And my current value could be the other one, for example, like that. And now it's doing that for these ones. Also, by the way, if you then want to filter it, you can choose text filters and equals. You can then here say also a parameter. So it's nice because you can do this without having to edit the formula bar, which is kind of really nerve wracking for a lot of people. There you go. I did the wrong one. There's the cog. I can change to cost selection. Perfect. Uh, and now the user has the drop down here and also has the drop down in edit parameters in there. What is interesting though is that the user can type whatever they want though. So if they type in something different, press OK. It's not going to give them an error, so it's not actually data validation, it's just a recommended list. You can also do it from a query. So if I was to click on this, oh, let's go to the source, let's duplicate it again. And here I'm going to get this one and I'm going to right click and add as new query. So what this does is it takes it from the source back to the new query. And now I can remove the duplicates. If I want to, I can sort A to Z like that. This is actually a list like this. So it's not a table. In fact, if it is a table, it doesn't allow you to choose the parameter. So let's do the same to this one, but it's a table. So let's remove other columns. Let's remove duplicates. And then we'll see here, this is a single list table. And the other one is a list. So the UI is different. The icon is different there. So let's go into my manage parameters and I'm going to add a new parameter. And this is going to take a query. Now the queries that are possible are reference and cost queries. I don't get the option to choose the single list table because that is a table. If I wanted that to be choosable, I would click here and go to transform this one to list, convert to list. And now if I go to manage parameters, I will see it there. Parameters are also really, really good if you are using custom functions inside Power Query, like custom functions in here, invoke custom functions. They are more advanced than I'm going to show you in this video, but parameters are pretty useful in many ways. And you can do them in both ways, you can do them in the manual way through Excel cells by editing the formula bar, or you can do them with the built-in method using Power BI. And just to say finally that you do have managed parameters in Excel, it's exactly the same. But the problem is you can't get a list to come from a table. When I first did it, I assumed that if I create a new parameter, these are ones that I could choose if I chose a query, but query is grayed out because it needs to be a list. It can't be a single value that comes from Excel. It needs to be essentially a drop down list that the user can choose. But as I showed before, the user can also type whatever they want and overwrite that. So it's not actually a data validated list. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David and I'm thanks for watching. Check out my other videos.